Cleaning the Stevens Long Tom After Shooting Black Powder Loads, William Hovey Smith, 2018. I'm the author of Extreme Muzzleloading, and here I've been shooting black powder loads through the muzzle of a cartridge shotgun, and now I'm going to show you how to clean. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And for the last, oh, 10 days or so, We've been pretty heavy into black powder shooting with 12 gauge cartridge shotguns such as the Stevens Long Tom single barrel. And what we have done is we've developed two different methods for making this gun a muzzleloader. Uh, one uses a cut off cartridge case and the other uses a special insert. Now we've just shot the gun and we did a pattern with our special insert and this is the pattern it gave, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, yeah, I can kill game with this all day. So uh, this will get my squirrels and this will get my rabbits and this will get dove and all this kind of good stuff. Uh, if I point this gun at the right place, it will kill with a load of 70 grains of double FG old Ainsworth black powder and one ounce of shot, by the way. But we have shot it. Now, if you're considering doing such a thing, it's probable that maybe you haven't had any experience with black powder firearms before. And if that is the case, you must clean black powder with something that has a water component to it. Now you can use isopropyl alcohol, which has a water content and will dissolve the soluble corrosive salts. Or uh, I very often use the own dishwashing liquid and uh, water to clean out my barrels. Now, the country shotgun, like this single barrel here, breaks down in the typical manner. There goes the forend. Usually you don't have to do too much with that unless it's been wet. Then the barrel comes out like this. And you can perhaps see that there's something in the barrel, something black, okay? That is a steel insert that allows you to make this a muzzle loader. And you just drop your ramrod in and knock it out like that. This has a rubber seal here and also some grease on it to help blow back from getting back into the mechanism itself. Nonetheless, that as well as materials from the cutoff cartridge cases I was using does allow some gases to get back into the mechanism here on the face and also to work its way into the extracting mechanism here in the barrel. Now the whole barrel goes in soapy water, etc, etc, sluice, 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 as you'll see. Now this is a simple single barrel gun. Uh, on more complex guns, the assembly and disassembly is much more complex. So, if you're going to make this sort of conversion, it's best to do it with a single barrel gun so you don't have to clean all the components all the time each time you shoot. There is a Mossberg which has a muzzle loading barrel, and if you use it, yeah, you have to completely disassemble that gun, take all the internal parts out, and clean it. The Stevens Model 94 has an extractor here and it's spring loaded so it automatically is tripped by this arm right here and when it does this flies forward under spring pressure and ejects with considerable force uh, your empty hull. Now to clean this thoroughly this pin has to be driven out and then this comes out under strong spring pressure. And this is not an operation I want to do very often because I have to compress this 
in a vise typically uh, to get it back in. As long as this functions, I'm going to not clean it, at least not completely disassemble and clean it. Because I want to remove this pin as few times as possible. So when I'm through with this whole series, I will take this mechanism apart, clean it, oil it, probably use some steel wool on it to remove any active rust, and uh, reassemble it. But, for the rest of it now, this is just put in a small container, a coffee cup, soapy water, okay, soaked, clean, wash, and dry. The barrel itself goes into a bucket or tub, and you want to use some soft absorbent cloth. Uh, this is old pajama material. I realize most people don't wear pajamas anymore and you can't get flannel pajamas anymore. But for those of you who have some old ones, or your wife's old flannel nightgown that she's worn out, okay, this works just fine. And you cut you some patches like yay. So far as the breech goes, you do have the breech face here. And I use a little rubbing alcohol on a patch and clean all of this area out. And make sure that your firing pin also goes in and out easily and give that a little extra squirt of lubricant. Well, as mentioned, there is tub of soapy water. And we're going to take one of our patches, put it on our rod, and start cleaning the barrel. Now here are our components. And this is a 12 gauge jag, which you can pick up at most larger sporting goods stores. that will fit on any ramrod. And then of course uh, we have the barrel itself. And you don't have to immerse the whole barrel in water. Just so long as you get enough so that you can suck water from the pan up into it. And the old tile down here is just to keep the slop, obviously, from running all around on this linoleum floor. And while you have water, you might as well just drop this in and let it proceed to soak. Plump. We got our patch down past the choke. Uh, the choke of the gun is, is very tight, of course, it's, it's right here. And it tightens as it gets toward the very muzzle. So if you get it past the muzzle constriction, then you're in good shape. Now, you want to draw the patch of the barrel. And as you do so, you see the water working. And you see it also coming black. And you also see black stuff coming out of the barrel. So this is exactly the action you want. This first patch has so much soluble salts and stuff in it, uh, I just throw it away and take a fresh one to do the rinsing with. So this goes back in the clean water. Patch gets wetted. Over the bore. Ease down with the jag. Yeah, that's a better fit. Okay, and proceed as before. You see the water is now coming up clean. There we go. And as you can see, we removed quite a bit of junk out of that barrel the first time around. To save on the number of patches, I'm just taking a piece of paper towel and just getting some of the excess water off the outside here. And we're going to wad it up and actually push a plug down the bore.
It's got a little lubricant on it, which is good, and perhaps a small amount of rust. And now we take a clean cloth patch and do the same. And that came out pretty good. Flip it over and just do it again. Now this next patch is saturated with rubbing alcohol or, or you could use WD-40 to serve the same function. This has a cleaning uh, action to it. I also double it and run it through to make sure I get the chamber area and the forcing cone clean. Now that is a mirror bright mirror finish barrel. What it needs now is heating and lubrication. I now have the end of the gun mechanism and the extractor on the stove eye. The idea here is to heat it just enough so that it's hot to the touch. You don't do it red hot or anything even remotely close to it. You just want to get it warm enough to drive any loose water inside the mechanism out. So far as the barrel goes, this is getting to be the final stages. Not the end stage. This would be where many people would suppose that you would start, and that is with a lubricant. No, the lubricant goes on last. I use bore butter, which is the same thing I lubricate patches with. If you shoot a round ball and patch out of this gun, it's lubricated with bore butter. And it has two functions. One, it does also clean. And secondly, particularly since this upper portion of the barrel is warm, it actually seeps down into the pores of the gun itself and further protects it against corrosion. So now we're going to work primarily down with the chamber and the forcing cone. And as you see, I'm going deeper and deeper down in the barrel toward the choke. This barrel has such a tight choke on it, I don't know if I'll be able to force it through this way or not. These connections untwist, and what I was doing just then is tightening up the threads. No, it's not going to let me push through. Okay. So that be done. And that came out very clean indeed. Put some here on the exterior parts. Concerning this part, okay, we washed it, we wiped it off, we had it drying here, put a little bore butter on it, get down in the primer pocket a little bit, look through, yeah, that's good, don't see any residue in there. So now, this is clean and ready to go in. We're now down to what do we do with the action here. The best practice is to take our alcohol again. Put a good bit on the patch. To let you know if you have any nicks in your fingers, by the way. Clean the breech face, the races here, and the lock. I've actually fired the gun, and you see the firing pin is protruding a little bit now, so I can wipe it off too. Okay. And we can take a little bore butter. And we're going to put that on these operating parts.
just a little light smear around and that further protects the gun. We have now finished up our cleaning for a gun that we're going to use like tomorrow and uh, so all remains is to put it back together and of course like most of these break open guns they go together just as simply as they came apart. The only thing here you have to make sure this little spring loaded piece is exactly centered or it won't have enough clearance to fit. Okay, and that's a good strong snap fit. Now, what do you do with a ramrod? Uh, this gun, of course, obviously does not have a uh, means for attaching the ramrod. So, for storage, just take the ramrod. and drop it down the barrel. Look. Now that way it can stay together and you know where your ramrod is and you don't put it down in the corner and leave it somewhere. And uh, you're ready for loading up again for tomorrow morning hunt. For now this is Hobie Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. Not only am I the author of prize-winning books like Extreme Muzzle Loading, I also talk about muzzle loading in backyard deer hunting. I also have some Pacific e-books about muzzle loading, such as shooting and maintaining your muzzle loader and hunting with muzzle loading shotguns and smoothbore muskets. My newest book is a business book, Create Your Own Job Security, Plan to Start Your Own Business at Midlife. In this book, I advocate starting a whole series of businesses throughout one's life to accomplish what you need to do with the ultimate aim of founding your own business, have it running quietly in the background while you're working for someone else, and when you're in your 40s and older and all of a sudden get a layoff notice, you have something to fall back on that you actually already own. For more information about my books, blogs, and more than 700 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To learn more about my new business book, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.